Welcome back Egyptology lovers. Today we're going to discuss a section of the Rhine papyrus that I copied on this papyrus over here. This papyrus I got from the son of the pharaoh. You can find him on my IG and you can buy anything from him from ancient Egypt. So I like to buy papyrus from him because they're big sizes. So let's move into the material. So what I've copied is a section of the Rhine papyrus. Uh, the Rhine papyrus is a papyrus that was discovered in Egypt in the 19th century. It's a copy of a much earlier text. So the text itself of mathematics here is from a 12th dynasty copy that was copied by someone in the 22nd dynasty, much later on. And that was an intermediary period under Shushank II, so uh, not a native of, uh, of Egypt. So let's move into the material. This is a small section. It's divided into two. So this section here is known as Lesson 60. And over here, you have five lessons. Um, sorry, six lessons over here. And this is divided into four by, together for geometry, one for division, and one for just simple arithmetic. So let's go through it. The, this is written in hieratic format. Hieratic has been around since ancient Egyptian time, much first dynasty, if not earlier, when the, the, the writing was available because it was a much faster way to write. It's a more of a cursive form of writing. Uh, they didn't write in hieroglyphics. They wrote in hieratic, which made it faster and easier to write with. So it was with ancient, uh, with ancient hieroglyphics long ago. So let's go reading from right to left, which is the canonical direction of the writing. So it goes from right to left, right to left, right to left, and then moves to this section, right to left. The red parts that you see introduce what is being discussed here. Uh, what is the idea of this particular math problem or the basic idea? And that's, you'll find it also in the Book of the Dead and other uh, particular uh, documents that are written in papyrus as well. So the first one, first four discuss geometry. So the first one to, says how to calculate or compute an area of the field, which is rectangular. And the other ones say the same about calculating the area of a field that is circular, calculating the area of a field, which is triangular, and then calculating the area of a field that is trapezoidal. So here you have four of them that discuss how to do that to ascribe. So this is how they would pull up the papyrus and read and learn how to do the mathematical equations. Now, these are the four for geometry. The next one is about division within proportions. So if you have a full triangle, you can have three different triangles in it. So this is one triangle, two triangle, and three triangle. And how to do the divisions within it. And um, that's pretty much the basis of what this formula is all about. Then we enter into something which is just basic arithmetic. It's basically talking about how to calculate something 10 times or something about the 10 uh, in 7 setat, which is basically uh, a form of mathematics they used or equivalent numeric system that they had used. I could share something with you guys online about it. Uh, there's not one thing about the whole math. It's just a scattering of different articles. But you should check out academia.edu. They have some information about this. All right, let's move into the final section over here. Now, just going back again before I move on to here, this would be considered lesson 49, lesson 50, lesson 51, lesson 52, lesson 53, and lesson 54. And now we're moving to lesson 60, which is over here now. Lesson 60 is pretty much five different examples and ways in calculating the slope of a pyramid. So you can see these are pyramids. So how to calculate the slopes. So depending on the, uh, the problem that you have at hand, it tells you if, let's say, if the base is this height, and if the base is this uh, length, and then the height is that, what is basically the, uh, the angle? Or it'll go vice versa and give you different ideas about, well, what if, if you only had these two sides here, how would you calculate the base and then achieve the slope? So it's just a variation of different problems on the same type of solution that they were looking for to figuring out what the slope of the pyramid is. And that's what you have in the five examples. So that's pretty much it for the Rhine Papyrus. Nothing too complex in that way. But this is something that scribes would pull out of the House of Knowledge and try to read and learn. And then certain people would copy and distribute it amongst the Egyptian uh, schools of thought or different temples around Egypt. So this is just a section of the Rhine Papyrus. You can check it out as well. Uh, I believe it's in the British Museum. And the Moscow one is, of course, in the Moscow Museum in Russia. Uh, so that's it. So that's the calculations. I'm not going to go too much in detail about what's written here. I uh, just want to show you that I made something like this and that this something does exist online. And you can read about it and learn about it a little bit more. Uh, just a small fact about the papyrus itself that I learned through reading of the many academic sources is that the papyrus itself, which is copied right here from a older document from the 12th dynasty has a lot of errors, uh, errors in mathematics where certain numbers were mistakenly put by the copyist than other numbers. Because remember, copyists didn't really know how to read. They just copied and they might have made errors because, you know, they're just 
hurrying up to write the uh, to copy the document and made some mistakes. I know I've made mistakes when I was copying it. I'd look at a picture and write the hieroglyphs or the hieratic, and I realize I make a mistake or I'd omit certain words or I wouldn't be able to fill in certain things. And that normally happens because you're copying long texts and it's quite normal. So that's the only thing I wanted to say about the papyrus that you'll discover if you research it a little bit more. Once again, this is the Ryan papyrus and you can find it in the British Museum. Uh, these are the lessons uh, 50, 50, uh, sorry, 49 to 54, and then lesson 60 for this entire section over here. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about the Ryan Papyrus. I really like making it, so I'm just going to roll it up and put it with the rest of my archive and just enjoy it for many years to come. Thanks, guys.